Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. It's finally here. So many of you have requested this since the start of my channel. Here is a tutorial on how to make a book inspired by River Song's Diary from Doctor Who. I'll be making the slightly newer version of the book, and if you're not familiar with Doctor Who, it's a lot of time traveling, so the book kind of ages depending where you are in the series. So if you want to, you can age the pages and make the book a little older if you'd like. This book does take a while to make, so I highly recommend having a Doctor Who marathon. That's what I did, and as usual, I will include all of the supplies I used in the video description below. Alright, let's get into it! For the pages, I'm using 52 sheets of this cream color letter size paper. Fold each sheet in half, and you can run a bone folder along the folded edge so that each page lays more flat. Now with all the sheets folded in half, you're going to stack them in groups of four to make signatures. So four sheets stacked look like this, and 52 sheets will give me 13 signatures total. You can also add more pages if you want a larger book. The diary in the show looks a little smaller than this page size, so I'm going to trim all of these signatures to five by seven inches. So I'm trimming one and a half inch from the top and a half inch from the edge of each signature. For the end pages, I'm using a thicker paper that's more like a cardstock in the same color, and I'm going to repeat that process on these. So fold them in half and trim those to five by seven so that they're the same size as all of the signatures. So now I have two end pages for the front and back cover and 13 signatures. And now it's time to mark the binding holes for all the signatures. On one signature, starting from the center, I marked off one inch increments. The amount and spacing of the binding holes is really up to you. This will be my template so I can mark off the rest of the signatures. Place it on top and stack it evenly with the rest of the signatures. Then with two straight edges, go along the spine and mark straight lines like this so that each signature has a mark on the folded edge. You can also go through each signature and mark the same measurements, but I find this method just a little bit easier and faster. Now that all the binding holes are marked, you can pierce through each signature with an awl. If you don't have an awl, you can also use a thumbtack. Unfold each signature and pierce through the marks like this. Fold it back up and make sure you put them back in the order that you marked them. This will give you a more straight and even binding. And now for the stitching portion. I'm using regular standard sewing thread and a standard sewing needle. Double thread your needle, and I usually like to work with two feet at a time, otherwise the thread gets tangled and hard to manage. And tie a knot on the end. Start with the bottom signature, and make sure you keep the rest of the signatures in the order that you marked them. I'll be using a kettle stitch binding method to make this text block. If you're not familiar with this binding, go check out my kettle stitch book binding tutorial. It's an in-depth focus on just the binding itself, and it goes at a slower and steady pace so that you can easily learn how to do it. Now that I have all the signatures stitched together, it's time to glue the spine. I'll be using my DIY book press for this, but you can also use heavy weights or a vise. Press the book, making sure all of the signatures are aligned and straight, and then brush on a coat of PVA glue. After that first coat is dry, apply one more coat and then let that dry. And then you can apply the end pages. Brush about a quarter of an inch line of PVA glue near the spine. Align the folded edge of the end page to the spine and glue it down. Turn over the text block and repeat that same process on the other side with the other end page. And you can place it in a book press to let it dry. This next part is to add strength to the binding. I cut a 5 by 8 inch piece of paper, and this size can vary, centered it on the spine of my dry text block, and creased it so I know where the middle is, brush on some PVA glue onto the paper, center the text block onto it, and glue that piece of paper to the spine of the text block. This is an extra step that I like to do to all of my case-bound books, and it just helps bind the text block to the cover a little bit better. You may notice some warping from the glue on your end pages. To prevent that moisture from going into the rest of the pages of the text block, you can insert some wax paper on both end pages. Then press the book and let that completely dry. And now for the covers. I trimmed out my covers from thick book board. For the measurements, since my book is 5 by 7, here is the width that I made. And if your text block is a different size, here's a formula to figure out the width 
and here is the height. This will give you an eighth of an inch hang on your book cover. To make the cover embossed, I did that to three more pieces of board. I then measured out the TARDIS based on River Song's diary in the show. I'm sure you Doctor Who fans know what that looks like. It's up to you how you want to make that on your cover, but if you want some reference, here is what I drew with a fourth inch spacing. That spacing is what I'm going to trim out to make the emboss on my cover. So I trimmed out the spacing pieces, and then I'm left with these pieces, which will be the raised part of my emboss. And instead of measuring out that whole TARDIS again, you can use those pieces as a template, trace them onto the other piece of board, and make those same exact shapes. So now I have the embossed pieces for the front and back cover. This is a lot of extra work, and you can totally get away with just drawing the TARDIS on two pieces of cover board if you want to. To mimic the spine of River Song's diary, I trimmed out two pieces of bookboard in this size and repeated that step once more so I have four of these pieces. This diary has a slight curve to the spine, so I'm just bending these pieces, and glue the smaller board pieces onto the larger board pieces. These curved pieces should match the width of your spine, so make sure that they are about the same. And then glue on the embossed pieces to your cover board. And keep in mind that you want negative space where the spacing was that you trimmed out, if that makes sense. After all of those pieces are dry, you can now move on to covering the board. I'm using a piece of vinyl to make it look like a leather-bound book. The backing is a felt type of material which does stick to the board with PVA glue, but if your material has a different backing that doesn't stick, try this DIY book cloth method so that your material will easily glue to your board. Alright, now we're ready to glue the board pieces to the vinyl. Make sure you have enough of the material so you can fit all of the board pieces, plus extra space. With your PVA glue, start with one cover and brush it on. Be sure to get the glue inside the embossed areas, and glue it down onto the back of your material. Press it down and flip it over, and use a bone folder or something to score all of those embossed areas. You'll want to do this a couple of times until the glue becomes tacky and holds the material in place. Flip it back over and measure out the hinge. Mine is going to be 3 eighths of an inch and this is the area that helps the book open and close. Now glue down those two curved spine pieces next to that measurement. Flip it over and press down on those embossed areas. Then I'm going to measure out another 3 eighths next to those pieces to make the back cover hinge. Add glue to the second cover piece and press it down, and I like to use a drafting triangle just to make sure everything is aligned and straight. Flip it over and repeat that same process you did on the first cover. Score those embossed areas until the glue gets tacky and then the material will stay embossed. Then cut about an inch border around the entire cover. Then cut all four corners like this. Then add glue to the sides and fold over the flap and press it down until the glue dries. Repeat that on all sides, and sometimes it helps to lift the cover up while it's still pressed on the table so that the flaps dry evenly and flat on the edge. And if your cover material has trouble sticking to itself on the inside, you can use binder clips and that will help it stick together while it dries. After the glue is dry, the cover is finally ready to glue onto the text block. Place the text block down evenly on one side of the cover, and you can put a piece of paper inside the end page so that you don't get glue all over the text block. Add some PVA glue to the inside of the opposite cover, and then add glue to the outside of the end page. Remove that scrap piece of paper, and now glue the end page to the cover while still keeping an even border around it, and that should be your hang. In my case, that's an eighth of an inch hang. Press it down so that it's glued flat to the cover and repeat that same process on the other side. This time you want to hold the cover and the text block so that you can evenly align the other end page and again make sure you have that even border around it. You may notice my book has a little more warping on the end pages. That's what happens when you use too much glue, but to prevent any warping from getting into the text block and making all those pages wonky, you can place a piece of paper in and a piece of wax paper on top of that so that none of that moisture gets into your book. So I sandwiched wax paper and regular paper on both end pages, putting the paper on the side of the end page and the wax paper toward the text block, 
and place the book in the book press one more time to dry. I usually let my books dry overnight, and as you can see, the moisture collects into the paper, which is better than inside the book. At this point, you can be finished if you're happy with the color of your cover. However, I want mine to be more blue, like the diary, so I'm using acrylic paint and dry brushing it onto the cover, and doing this really lightly. I'm removing any excess paint on a scrap piece of paper and then lightly going over the embossed shapes on the cover. And it really doesn't take much, just a few brush strokes around the cover and it really does look more like that TARDIS blue. And this will also make your book look slightly weathered. After the paint is dry, this River Song Diary is finally complete. If you're making this as a gift, you can also tie that red ribbon around it to make it more special, just like Doctor Who did when he gave the book to River Song. I hope you Whovians enjoyed this tutorial. If you make your own version of this book, I would love to see your pictures, so share those with me on my social links. I had a blast binging on all of the seasons. There are so many seasons of Doctor Who. And in the comments below, tell me which is your favorite Doctor if you are a Doctor Who fan. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Sea Lemon, for more DIY. If you like this project, you might also like one of these book projects right here. I will include these links in the description below, and I will see you guys next time.